Using a pen tool to draw masks with software is an essential skill. Here's how you can be awesome drawing masks with the pen tool in Fusion. I like to do drawings. Okay, so here we have a shot in Fusion, and this is from a horror film that we just shot. I actually have a full course that's available for free on YouTube on how we did the visual effects for it. There's a link up there, and also in the first line of the description. But I'm going to not show my page navigation, just so we have a little bit more room here. And just to practice, we're going to trace pretty much anything we want in this shot. And to help us see this a little better, I'm just gonna start with a background node and merge this over and I'm just gonna make this bright red, okay? Then we'll take this bright red background and take a polygon node and plug that into it, okay? The very first thing you need to know about drawing with a polygon mask in Fusion is to go over here where it says right click here for shape animation and this little keyframe diamond, just click it and turn it off. The reason for that is because any shape that we add is going to add a keyframe at this point. And then if we were to move this around at all, that's going to animate the shape, which might be what we want, but is also often not what you want. <laughs> so let's be intentional about it. I'm just going to turn that off. In fact, at this point, you could even go up to Polygon 1 and right click on it and go down to Settings and say Save Default. And what that's going to do is anytime that you make a polygon from now on, it's going to load with the default being this shape animation is not animated, okay? So now that we have that, let's draw a shape. We're gonna start really simple. Let's just draw around this headrest here. It doesn't really matter what you start with, but what we wanna do is click on any part of the edge, pretty much any edge that we wanna start with. And so it doesn't matter, I'll just click somewhere on an edge right here. What that's gonna do is add a control point. And from there, you can click another place and that's going to add another control point. And the more you click, the more points it's going to add. And the intention being that eventually you're gonna come around and you're gonna click on this first control point again. And you'll see right here when my mouse hovers over that control point, it shows a little circle. That circle means that you're completing the path, that you're closing that shape. And when I do that, boop, it closes the shape and it activates the mask and it applies the mask to the background. So we've already learned a lot. If you're brand new to masking, I'll just get rid of these again. To draw any mask, you click anywhere on the image and then you can click wherever you want a point and you eventually want to come back and click on the first point again. Once you do, it closes the shape and then it actually activates the mask. I also kind of skipped over this, but you can drag a box and select a bunch of points and grab them and move them around. You can hit delete. You can click off and then just click one point and move it around. And so you can edit this mask afterwards. In fact, you can even add another point. So we have this curve and we want this mask to be along that curve. And so we could grab another point like this and push it out, another point like this and push it out and kind of mask that curve like that. So you're not stuck with the points that you put in. You can always add points. You can hit delete or backspace to get rid of points. Whatever you wanna do, you have total freedom when it comes to using this polygon mask. Now, let's take a second and really look at this. If we're going to mask out this headrest with this shape, which by the way, we're not really masking it right now. I'm masking a red background that's over it just so that we can see it a little better. I'll show you how to actually cut things out here in just a minute. We're just looking at how the pen tool works. So if we look at this shape versus the actual image that we want to cut out, we'll notice a couple things. One is this isn't totally right on. This probably needs more curvature than we have. And so it would need more points, right? Well, sort of. You could go through here and just make all of these points really, really curved like this and just kind of keep going. And you could get a pretty good result and have a pretty curved kind of shape. It's still a little bit chunky, but it's better. And then if you were to take this mask and soften the edge, it's probably not going to make a big difference. It's going to look pretty darn smooth. But there's a problem with this. The main problem being, what if you want to change this? What if, what if you want to move it around? What if you want to make it a little bit smaller or bigger? Then you'd have to move each one of these points or maybe even just grab them all and then move them. And it just kind of gets annoying real quick, real quick to adjust this even just a little bit. And then you have to smooth everything out again. Oh my gosh, it's just so awful. Why would they build it this way? We should quit fusion, right? <laughs> okay, I 
quit. I quit right now. I cannot work here anymore. No, we don't need to quit Fusion. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people make who are new at masking. What they want to do is make a hundred little control points because they want their mask to be right on. Now, it's good to want to make your mask be as perfect as possible, but this is the wrong approach. What we should really be aiming for is using the least amount of points possible. So I'll just select all these and get rid of them. With my polygon tool selected, I'm gonna make just one point here, one point here, one point here, and close it. Now, this is a terrible mask, obviously. And of course, we could grab more points and kind of pull this out exactly the way that we want. But let me show you some magic. If I were to take one of these points, You'll notice that not only can I grab this point itself, but there's also these little yellow lines. I know it's sort of hard to see on the screen recording, but they're right here and right here, okay? There's these little control points, and you can take either of these control points and you can move it, and look what happens. It adds a curve to the line. So I could take this, move that around, and once I've moved one, it's gonna move both of them at the same time. But if I hold control, I can grab each one and I can change this around. And look, we have this curve here and I can match this just using this control point. And let's hold control and mask, match this using this control point too. And click down here and grab this control point like this. And I can really get pretty darn close to the shape that I'm looking for with three points, three points. Let's hold control and maybe bring this down a little bit like this, soften this a little bit. Now I have this really smooth and pretty exact shape that I've made just with three points. Then if I need to change this, look at this, look how easy it is to change this completely and it still looks nice no matter what I do. That's pretty neat. So that's another big lesson is don't use lots of points. Use the minimum, be lazy with points. If you can get away with three points, do that. If you can get away with 10 points and that's what you have to use, then do that. But don't use 20 points on something that only takes three points, okay? This is like golf rules. Why don't you improve your lie a little, sir? Yes, yes, winter rules. Oh, yes. We want the least amount of points possible. <laughs> Couple tips on this. When we have a point like this, a little shortcut to work with these handles a little bit easier is just to select this point and hit Shift S for smooth, Shift S, smooth. And that's going to kind of average out the curve and bring it to a pretty darn close place if we positioned our top point right. That's gonna do a pretty good job. So that's a lot less work. Same thing down here, Shift S. That's going to give us our little shape like this. And it's gonna be pretty good, pretty close. The other thing you can do is select these points and hit Shift L and that makes the points linear. So there's soft and there's linear. So that kind of brings it back to how we originally did it. What's neat, if you have a polygon and you start getting used to drawing this way, you can draw it like this, grab this, select all these, shift S, and you're pretty close to what you need within just a few seconds, okay? But you can go even faster than that. Let's select these and get rid of them. When you click to add a point, you can also click and drag, and that's going to add these handles and let you position them where they're supposed to be. Same thing here, there we go. And we can kind of add these handles in however we want, and we can kind of build this shape and the curve and everything as we go. So a good exercise is to pick any image, you could literally just get any image off the internet, throw it into Resolve and bring it up in Fusion, and see if you can draw the curve of something with just a couple points. So if I wanted to follow the curve of this window, if I want it sharp, I just hit it once. If I want it curved, I click and drag. And so I want to see if I can get this curve right. I don't have to get it totally right because I can always change it, right? So there we go. And we'll just kind of do this down here so we can see it. And I'll just grab this little handle and make sure that sits right on that edge. Cool, I'll uncheck solid on my mask just so we can really see this edge. Push up the border width a little bit and we can see that line a little easier. And I'll just kind of push this down to be right on the edge of that window. And the more you do just stuff like this, the more you're gonna get used to using that pen tool and things will get easier and easier. At first it's gonna be hard, that's okay if it's hard. You can do hard stuff, that's no big deal. 
You just got to keep with it. But those are kind of the main skills for drawing a mask. And so if I wanted to mask this entire window with her face and everything, it's only going to be good for one frame, but we're just kind of practicing how to draw. All right. So let's just zoom in here. This is going to be a sharp corner. So I'll just click once. This is going to be a little bit bigger. So we'll do something like this. And again, I'm just using the minimum amount of points that I would need for this. And again, I don't have to do it just right. This is all messed up right there, but that's okay. We're going to go back and fix it. So you try and get it like sort of right the first time, as close as you can. Again, I'm only using a couple of points here around her face. I'm just kind of clicking and dragging when I want this to be round around her nose like this, her lip, like this. This hair we would have to deal with in a different way, but for now I'll just kind of chop it off. That's not something you would mask. You would use a mat or something to make sure that hair gets through. Boop, like that. So now we have the outline of our window and everything. We can go back and adjust it. So I'll select this polygon right here. I can probably just hit shift S and that will soften this out a little bit. Take this down and adjust these handles a little bit just to be right on right where we need them. Okay. So that's a great way to practice is just try and make a stroke around something like that. And then what's great is this isn't just a skill of I can trace things. Now, what we have, at least for this frame, would be a very good mask for our window. Then we could put something outside of the window that doesn't cover up any of our foreground. One last little tip. There are some hotkeys that you might want to check out. Anytime that you draw a mask, I'll just kind of redo this here. Let's do just four points here. Again, I can select all of these and hit Shift L to make them linear. I can take these points and by holding different keys on the keyboard and then clicking and dragging, I can do all kinds of stuff to whatever points I have selected. So for instance, if I hold S, I can click and drag and that scales this as I click and drag back and forth. If I hold X, that'll scale it on the X axis. Holding Y will scale it on the Y axis. T twists it. So it's a rotation twist, T for twist. And so you can do some kind of advanced transforming things just by selecting part of your mask. And then wherever you click and drag, that's going to be the axis. So I can twist these around kind of the middle. If I hold T and click and drag, it's going to twist those around where I clicked. But if I were to click here on her nose, then that's going to rotate it around her nose. So this stuff is all super useful, especially if you're doing stuff like rotoscoping or any kind of masking. So, so helpful. And there's more that we can go into, but that's really the basics of it. If you want to learn some practical application for masking, we do a lot of that in our VFX course right here. You can even download the footage and follow along. It's our entire edit of our horror film. You can download the high quality footage that's ungraded, has no visual effects on it, and you can put visual effects on it yourself. You can practice color grading. It's just, it's just a good time, okay? So go check that out right now. Do it. I wish I had coffee in here, but I don't. <laughs>